Hello learners, I hope you are doing great. I welcome you all to my channel Educating Young Minds where today I am starting a series on Classics NCRT Science Textbook. I hope you like the video and it does help you in some way to educate your mind. So let's begin with first chapter of our book that is food. Where does it come from? So in this video you will learn about variety of foods, major food groups, food ingredients, sources of food ingredients, plant parts used as food, animal food and types of animals. So to begin with, let's first study about different varieties of food. We eat a variety of foods in our daily lives and our food preferences generally depends upon many factors. For example, it depends upon time of the day. That is, in breakfast, we generally prefer to have parathas, bread jam, eggs or omelette, upma, poha, etc. Whereas for lunch or dinner, we generally prefer to have dal chawal, sabzi roti, idli dosa, fish rice, chicken, etc. If we talk about morning or evening time, we prefer to have tea with some snacks. By the way, what did you have for your breakfast today? You must have noticed that food preferences varies with seasons also. For example, in summers, refreshing fruit juices, coconut water, watermelon, mango, cucumber and green leafy vegetables become your favorite food choices. Whereas in winter, hot tea, coffee, soup, sarso ka saag, gajar ka halwa and garma garam jalebi are your favorite choices. There is one another important factor which decides our food choices. That is regional difference, state to state difference. For example, a South Indian boy or girl in your class may prefer to have idli, dosa, vada, sambar, etc. Whereas a Punjabi boy enjoys chole bhature, parantha, sarso ka saag, lassi a lot. A Northeastern student in your class may like to have momos, noodles, thupka, etc. Thus, you will notice that there is a lot of variation in food eaten in different regions of India. Here I should emphasize a very important point. Eating a wide variety of healthy foods provides a range of different nutrients to the body which promotes good health and helps to protect ourselves against diseases. Broadly, there are five major food groups. Cereals and pulses such as wheat, rice, rajma, malka, moong, fruits such as apple, mango, banana, watermelon, vegetables such as tomato, potato, onion, bindi, gobi, dairy products such as milk, cheese, dahi, meat and poultry products such as chicken, fishes and eggs. Now let's find out what food items are made up of. The answer is ingredients. Food ingredients are substances that are combined to make a particular dish. For example, today you are planning to make your favorite rajma. What ingredients would you require? You would need rajma grains, water, salt, spices, oil, onion and tomato. And to make rice, you just need two ingredients, rice grain and water. For making chapatis, you need wheat or atta and water. And for your favorite momos, you would need maida, vegetables, oil, salt and spices. So with the help of these ingredients, you can make your favorite dishes. So after studying about ingredients, let's now study about sources of ingredients. Principally, there are two sources of ingredients, plants and animals. All of us know that we get rice, pulses, wheat, fruits and vegetables from plants. Whereas we get eggs, milk, meat, fishes and chicken from animals. Thus, there are two main sources of ingredients, plants and animals. Now let's take some more example to understand sources of ingredients. You already know that animals such as cow, buffalo and goat gives us milk and from milk we make products such as butter, cheese, curd. Similarly, hen gives us eggs and from eggs we make omelette, egg bhuji, etc. Wheat plant gives us flour or atta or maida and from this we make roti, bread, 
biscuits, noodles, etc. Now, so, since we are studying sources of various ingredients, so tell me the source of honey or where does the honey come from? Have you ever thought about it? It is a very interesting process. Let's find out. Honeybees collect nectar or sweet juices from flowers. Then they convert this nectar into honey and store this honey in their hives. We extract this honey from their hives and this is how we get honey in the market. But now you might be thinking why bees store nectar in their hives? Well, they do have a good reason. Flowers are not available around the year. They are available only in some seasons. So bees collect nectar during flowering seasons to survive during cold months and also to feed their young ones. Let's understand it this way. You know that water comes in your home in the morning only for two hours. Then what will you do? Obviously, you will store the water for the entire day, isn't it? That's what bees do. They collect nectar from the flowers when the flowers are available so that they have enough food to eat when the flowers are not available. Till now, we have been talking about plants and animals as major sources of ingredients. Now, Ram wants to know, is there any ingredient which does not come from plants or animals? The answer is yes. And the examples are salt and water. Both salt and water are natural resources and they neither come from plants nor animals. Salt is obtained from oceans and seas and water is obtained from rain, pond, rivers, lakes, oceans, etc. You know that different parts of the plant such as seeds, fruit, leaf, flower, stem and roots are used as food? Let's see some examples. For example, we eat seeds of wheat, rice, pulses, mustard plants. And we eat fruits of tomato, bindi, brinjal and shimla mirch plant. The leaves of palak, cabbage, pudina and methi plants are eaten. Whereas stem of onion, garlic and potato plants are eaten. Roots of carrot, radish and beetroot plants are eaten, whereas we eat flowers of cauliflower and broccoli plant. Till now we have been talking about what we eat. Now let's talk about what animals eat. Some animals eat plants, whereas some feed on other animals. Some of them eat both plants as well as other animals. Based on their eating pattern, animals are classified as herbivores, carnivores and omnivores. Herbivores animals eat only plants, for example, a cow. Carnivores animals eat other animals, for example, a lion. Omnivorous animals eat both plants and other animals, for example, a crow. Now, these are some of the examples of herbivorous, omnivorous and carnivorous animals. Herbivorous animals include cow, buffalo, goat, horses, deer, elephants, butterfly and parrot. Whereas omnivorous animals include squirrel, crow, rats, dogs and humans. Carnivorous animals include lion, tiger, snake, crocodile, cats, spider and lizard. So with this we completed first chapter of our book. I hope you liked the video. If yes then please like share and subscribe educating young minds and do provide me a feedback. Thank you. Have a great day ahead.